One of these men flew a fully loaded communist airliner through the Iron Curtain to freedom. What is your name, please? My name is Mira Slovak. My name is Mira Slovak. My name is Mira Slovak. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Mira Slovak and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here's our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo, and Tender Touch Dry Skin Bath Oil. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Second, and we're mighty glad to have her back, Miss Kitty Carlisle. Then, Mr. Don Amici. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. all got your uh, affidavit envelopes. Will you please open them and take out your first affidavit card and follow along as I read. I, Miro Slovak, made international headlines seven years ago when I landed a fully loaded Czechoslovakian passenger airliner at an American base in Germany and walked away to freedom. I am now a co-pilot for Continental Airlines. As a hobby, I drive racing hydroplanes, fast, high-powered motorboats which travel at speeds around 170 miles per hour. Last year, I won the President's Cup race on the Potomac River. Next month, I will drive in the famous Gold Cup race. And the day after the race, I will receive my United States citizenship. Signed, Miro Slovak. <laughs> Three stalwart gentlemen for this first round of challenges panel, all claiming to be Miro Slovak, who flew an airliner to freedom outside the Iron Curtain. We'll start this questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Uh, Mr. Slovak, number one, uh, who won, what is the name of the boat that won the President's Cup race the year before you won it? Would be 1958. Wahoo. Wahoo, number two, do you agree with that? Number two? I don't, I don't recall. Uh, number three, who owned the winning boat the, in 1958? Uh, Pepsi. Uh, number one, uh, who is the president of Continental Airlines? Uh, Mr. Six. Uh, number two, what exactly uh, caused the incident of your flying the Czechoslovakian passenger airliner out of uh, Russia? Desire for freedom. Uh, Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Number two, do you happen to know what Mr. Six's hobby is? No, I don't know him so close. Uh, number two, maybe you could tell me what is empennage? What does empennage mean? Do you happen to know? Empennage, it's a uh, rear section of airplane. Thank you. Number three, how do you perform an outside loop? An outside loop, you come up, turn, and go down. Thank you. Number one, which side of the Potomac River is the airport on in Washington, please? On the right side. And what airfield is on the other side of the Potomac? Well, I, I don't know the name. Num Kitty. Number one, where were you when you decided to uh, make your try for freedom? In Prague. You, made, you decided to do this before you left the airport? Oh, yes, two years before. You had planned it? Number three, how many passengers did you have aboard? There were 27 passengers aboard. And number two, where did you, where, where does it say you landed? Where did you land? It says a base in Germany, but where? Frankfurt. You landed in Frankfurt. How many miles is that from your first start? 250 miles. From where? From Prague? Yes. Uh, when you do this Gold Cup race, how long does it take you, number two? All race? Yes. One hour. And where do you race from? Don Amici. Number one, what does uh, coming over the barrier mean? Mm. Barrier of speed. Number two, speed would barrier. you uh, would you agree with that? Speed barrier? Coming over the barrier. Does that mean anything to you? No. Mean anything to you, number three? Well, it does. It means breaking the <clears throat> speed of sound. Uh, uh, 
Number uh, two, what is the name of, uh, of uh, the two ways of landing in inclement weather? Do you know? Uh, three, uh, three point landing and two point landing, you mean? Number one, would you know? The, the, the two ways of people bringing you in, in inclement weather. The blind, the blind. Uh, Do you landing. know the names of the, of the two ways? Well, well, that's all we have time for, panel. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, it's time now to vote, so if you will do so, and of course, without consultation, as usual, mark your ballots for number one, number two, or number three. Of course, as is customary, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Has everyone voted? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Uh, this time, but I voted for number two. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> for whom did you cast your ballot? <laughs> I voted for number three. He was very loquacious to be the real one, but he said about breaking the sound barrier, and I thought he was the one. I think number two looks more like it. Probably number one. I'm sorry to you. <laughs> Don, what is your vote? I, uh, I voted for number two, uh, Bud, and I, uh, it's a pure out-and-out -out guess because I don't have the vaguest idea. Polly, which one do you think is the real one in this first I round? voted for number three. Uh, they were all... Uh, I have very little knowledge about uh, boats or, or airlines. Uh, he knew who owned the boat that won the Gold Cup the year before last. But number one answered, I have no idea who it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Having run down our own bit of voting, without those votes cast and in and recognized, our minds made up, let's see whether you made up your minds well at home, and we trust you're playing right along with us there, as we find out which of these three gentlemen is the one who flew the passenger plane to freedom. So will the real, Miro Slovak, please stand up. <laughs> We are proud to meet you, sir, believe me, to have you on the show. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Um, my name is uh, John Ovesia, and uh, I'm a television actor in New York. Television actor in New York. And number three, your real name and what you do? Uh, my name is Milo Scupa, and I'm associated with the California Texas Oil Company. Thank you, sir. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And checking up on the score, we find there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Helene Curtis. And, of course, a gift package of all the fine beauty products made by Helene Curtis for your ladies. Congratulations to you, and good night and good luck. <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our next huge team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Lenore Jensen, and this is my younger sister, Mary Ann. My name is Mary Ann Jensen, and this is my older sister, Lenore. <laughs> my name is Lenore Jensen. My name is Mary Ann Jensen. All right, panel, once again, would you please follow along with this affidavit? I, Lenore Jensen, a college junior, appeared on To Tell the Truth in November of last year and was questioned by these same four panelists. I had just won the 1959 United States Women's Small Bore Rifle Championship. This year, my younger sister, Mary Ann, a high school student, came to the national championships and with a borrowed rifle, won the junior small bore championship and came within two points of beating me for the 1960 national women's title. <laughs> Signed, Lenore Jensen. Panel, here is your problem. One of the three seated young ladies is the real Lenore Jensen, as you heard, rifle champion who has faced you before on this show. This time, she's brought with her her younger sister, Mary Ann, also a rifle champion. Now, you may question all six of the girls to find out which pair is actually the Jensen sisters. You may call the seated ones as you usually do, number one, number two, number three, and the others referred to as younger sister, number one, number two, number three, etc. And we start this round with Tom Poston, Tom. Huh? But how could you be so confident that we wouldn't all automatically recognize, Mr. Well, we're, we're sneaky, and we sort of feel that we fooled you before. We'll try to fool you again. Well, you certainly did. <laughs> I know I'd recognize Kitty and Polly. And Dr. <laughs> Baby. Uh, Miss Jensen, number three, can you tell me the three sizes 
of uh, 22 uh, rifle uh, shells. Shorts, longs, and long rifles. Thank you. Uh, little Miss Mary Ann, is that right, number two? Uh, can you tell me what makes a powder smokeless? A powder smokeless? Yes, the kind in the gun, I mean, of course, not a... <laughs> well, all the powder, in the powder, in the bullets, in the gun, is always, it always smokes when the bullet is um, out. Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss um, Jensen, number one? How did it? Did it? Did it, girl? Miss Jensen, number one, uh, did we get you when you were on our program originally? <laughs> you... Huh? We did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did we get you, number two? Uh, I got two votes. You got two votes. And number three, did we get you? Mm-hmm. All of us? <laughs> no, two. Two votes. Did I get you? No. No! I remember the first time, I'll never remember it now. Uh, number two, do you mind uh, winning a small boar championship? Does that uh, bring up terrible puns and so forth? No, not at all. Nobody bothers you on that. Uh, little sister, number one. When you, uh, oh, I'm sorry. When you uh, handle this rifle, does it have a kickback? No, it doesn't. None at all? No. Does the 22 have a kickback? No. Uh, one. Number two, uh, what is recoil? Oh, it's the, it's the bounce against your shoulder. Uh, number three, uh, uh, the little, little number three. What, uh, <laughs> what was the make of the rifle you used? A Winchester. Uh, number, uh, number one, Little, uh, what was the name of the shells that you used? Winchester. Uh, number two, Little number two, can you name me some other kinds of shells besides Winchester? Well, I know there's a Remington rifle, that's the other rifle that, um, I've never used it, I've only used a Winchester rifle. Uh, number three, would you name me some other rifles? Would you name me some other? Number three? Number oh, uh, Winchester and Remington. The only two you know. Uh, number one, what distance is, uh, is a small bore rifle effective? At what distance? Um, about a mile. Uh, number two, would you agree with that? Well, it's effective about up to a mile. Polly. Number two, you said you, you only use a Winchester, and it says here that you borrowed a rifle. Isn't it difficult when you have to be picky when you're borrowing? <laughs> you mean me, the little sister? <laughs> yes, little sister, I'm sorry, number two. Well, um, my sister had the heavy rifle, and the kind of rifle that I had was a little lighter. And we knew this person that I borrowed the rifle from, and it was a heavy rifle just as my sister had. She talks almost as much as I do. <laughs> Get to the point a little quicker, I think. And the time is up, Fanny. You have to mark your ballots Don't right now. Uh, uh, will be a small boy. Without... <laughs> I vote for five and six. Five and six. All righty. <laughs> Mark your ballots, please, and as you do so, without consultation, vote for number one, a couple number two, or a pair of sisters number three. Oh, Mark, everybody voted? Oh, why not? I'm Tom, lying. for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one. I, I tell you, I, I was a little hesitant about it, really, because I can't believe that at 22, even a long rifle is effective up to a mile. I'll have to find out about that afterwards, right? <laughs> Kitty. I voted for number one, um, not on the basis of her answers, but something, a kind of aura came to me that I'd seen her before. <laughs> Don, which is your choice? I <laughs> voted for uh, number three, uh, uh, Bud. I think that the probably, uh, I ne never attended one of these tournaments, but I imagine that the garb that little number three is wearing is probably what they use to shoot in tournaments. Okay, Polly, which one do you think is the real one? Well, with my glasses off, I don't recognize them now, and I'm sure I didn't recognize them before. But don't bring them back again. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I oh. voted for number two, and I, uh, number one looked very familiar. But uh, that doesn't, that, you know, because uh, at this distance, almost everybody looks familiar. <laughs> to number two also because the little girl is, is sort of after my own heart. She's talkative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it. Our rhymes and reasons that we discover now in our own particular moment of truth just how right or wrong we have become with our voting. So let's discover now which of these three pairs of sisters are the real rifle champions. Will the real Lenore Jensen please stand up? I'm really a little amazed. 
please. I'm sorry I didn't have your glasses because to look at the three pairs, you couldn't miss the resemblance between the two of them. They look so much alike. Let's well, find I'm about... very sorry. Well, all right, we have some pr surprises Arthur, for you, so hold on. Well, now, wait just a second. See what we have here for you. In case the other two Lenore Jensen's look familiar to you, as you said, we want to tell you that they were also on that November show. I know. <laughs> they, they were the two imposters. Of course, that's right. And, and I thought we voted for the same wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to meet them again. Uh, the law number one, tell us your real name, what you do. My name is Diana Hoxie, and I work at Salter's Bookstore. That's what she did before. <laughs> And Lenore, number two. My name is Patricia Webster, and I'm a ticket agent for Brana Fairway. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's meet the... who we voted for before? I don't. They might, but I haven't got time Do to check now. Do you remember two it? men voted for me, and the two women voted for Diana? Yes, they yeah. voted for her again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't want to hurt your feelings, Emma, <laughs> too. Let's find out about the Mary Ann's now. Mary Ann, number one. Your real name, what you do? My name is Janet Burns, and I'm a drama student at the American Shakespeare Academy here in New York. Bless you. <laughs> and Mary Ann, little sister, number two. My name is Jerry Gassick, and I'm an eighth grade student at Benjamin Franklin Junior High School in West Englewood, New Jersey. <laughs> Bless you all. We've had a lot of fun, and I sure hope you did. We you sure enjoyed... you aren't related to me? <laughs> <laughs> You're fascinated with the same needle, I think. In any event, checking the score, we find there were one, two, three incorrect votes. Not bad, since it's a big mob here to satisfy. Total of $750 from Helene Curtis, and of course, a gift package of all those fine Helene Curtis uh, beauty products. Thank you so much for playing our little trick on the panel. Good night and good luck. Let's meet our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Gray. My name is Robert Gray. My name is Robert Gray. Again, panel, read your copies of the affidavit with me. I, Robert Gray, am a member of President Eisenhower's White House staff. I was formerly acting appointments secretary to the president until I took over my present position. I now sit in on every meeting of the president's cabinet. It is my duty to prepare the agenda for the cabinet meetings and to make sure that decisions made by the president at these meetings are implemented. My position entitles me to a seat at the cabinet table, just three chairs from the president. My official title is Secretary of the Cabinet. Signed, Robert Gray. <laughs> Back to the number three this time, panel. Three gentlemen all claiming to be the uh, Secretary of the Cabinet, Robert Gray. And we start with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. I don't want to be impertinent, but for a gentleman who has to implement all that's decided at these meetings, you all look terribly healthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, you sit quite close to all the people who appear at the uh, meetings, I'm sure. What is the color of Cabot Lodge's eyes? His eyes? I have never noticed. Number two, you know? They're blue, I believe. Uh, number three, can you tell me if the, where the fireplace is situated to the desk in the president's study? To the left. To the left of the desk. Would you say that, number I one? I agree with that, yes. It is to the left of the desk. Um, number two, what is the name of the president's um, airplane? Well, there's no name given to the one now. It used to be the Columbine, but he just buys jets now that have no name. Uh-huh. Number three, were you appointment secretary before Eisenhower? Don Amici, no. please. Uh, number three, what is the uh, president's birthday? Don't remember. Number two? October 14th. Uh, number one, what day was it on, do you recall? A Tuesday. Uh, number uh, two, what, uh, what concern is uh, uh, Haggerty supposed to go with, is rumored to be going with when his term is up? Well, rumor only is uh, ABC, uh, I believe. Uh, number three, would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, number one, how many are in the cabinet? Eighteen, including the president. Uh, number two, who sits in the two closest chairs to the uh, president, the ones inside of you? Well, the uh, Secretary of State sits to his right and the Secretary of Defense to his left. Well, uh, and you, you were where? You were three chairs away, you yes, said? to the left. To the left? Well, who's in the other chair closest uh, to you? Secretary Benson is in the chair next to me. Uh, Polly? Number one, who was the pilot of the Columbine? Uh, Colonel Draper. Uh, number three, uh, there is a new carpet in the reception hall at the White House. Could you describe it? No, I cannot. I've never been there yet. Too new. Number two, <laughs> can you describe it? In the reception hall. In the big room where all the important people go. 
Like Polly. Like Polly. Yes. I never, I never, I've never even been in the White House. How would you know about all? Oh. I happen to know about this rug. <laughs> I do. My brother-in-law made it. Whether well, it's in the uh, diplomatic reception uh, room. It's a new rug carpet. that was that uh, was. Uh, has, uh, it's oval and has some figures or something in it. Uh, Number one, can you describe it? No, I cannot. Uh, number three, quite recently, there was a collection of people who got together and donated things for the interior design of the White House. Could you name that group? No, I can't. Number two, cannot. could you name the group? No, I can't. Number one? No, I cannot. Um, I pass. <laughs> Tom Poston? Uh, thank you. Number three, could you tell me uh, G G Jim Haggerty's former job? No, I can't. Uh, number two, do you happen to know President Eisenhower's golf score at White Silver Springs in this recent tour? No, I don't. You don't, you devil. <laughs> You'll be fired when you get back. Uh, number one, can you tell me what kind of note paper do you use to make your, your doodles on when you're working there with Captain? I make no notes. What was that, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> Will you kindly mark your ballots, panel, and vote as before without consultation for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, has everybody marked their ballots? Well, everybody, Tom, for whom did you cast your vote this time? Couldn't possibly vote for number one after that admission. <laughs> I vote for number two. I voted for Kitty? number. I voted for number two because I know that um, the 14th of October was not a Tuesday; it was a Friday, <laughs> and um, I'm full of information like that. <laughs> and number two knew about the color of Cabot Lodge's eyes, which are blue. And number number three didn't was not asked all these questions, so it might well be he. Don, what about your choice? I voted for number uh, two also, partially for uh, some of Kitty's reasons. And number one didn't know the president's birthday, as Kitty said. Uh, 14th was not a Tuesday. Hurry, Polly, Don, I've been told to hurry. Go ahead, Polly, the right uh, uh, I think it's number three because we didn't ask him any questions, but I voted for number two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it makes you unanimous for number two, apparently, so let's find out now whether we're right or wrong. Were we unanimous like that? It's sometimes fun to see as quickly as possible. So let's discover who of these three gentlemen is the real secretary of the president's cabinet. Will the real Robert Gray please stand up? You did mighty well. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Joseph Knight, and I'm a district manager of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and a job well done. And number three, your real name and what you do. My name is Harry Rounds. I'm a account executive and vice president of Davis Dorland Insurance Brokers in New York City. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And on the voting side, unanimous by the panel, which means no incorrect votes. Therefore, $150 from Helene Curtis, Curtis as a gift, as well as another gift, a gift package of all of the fine beauty products made by Helene Curtis for your ladies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. Hope you had a few chuckles. Good night and good luck. That's all the time we have for tonight, panel, except I commend to you a wonderful article in November Cosmopolitan about our own lovely kitty. Read it. You'll love it. Lovely picture of her, too. I guess that's it on the Vital Statistics Department. Good night, panel. Good night, good night God. God bless. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo, and new Tender Touch Dry Skin Bath Oil.
Johnny Olson saying goodnight from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.